Hello everyone, I'm Annie Gibbons and you're listening to Memoirs of Successful Women, the podcast where you get to hear candid conversations with fascinating women from around the globe who share aspects of their business and life journey, how they measure their success and what they have learnt along the way. Hello and welcome to Memoirs of Successful Women. Today I am delighted to introduce to you Dr. Peace Boucher, who is also known as Doc Peace, and she has a Doctor of Pharmacy, Transformational Rhythmic Speaking. She's an empowerment guru, and she has guided hundreds of women in creating a life that they deserve and desire by owning their innate gifts and talents and pursuing their passions. Mm -hmm. So welcome to the program, Dr. Peace. Thank you so much, Annie. So honored and blessed to be here with you. Oh, I am excited to be chatting to you because one, you're just a beautiful, gorgeous woman, so young and so accomplished. And um, I'm really looking forward to you sharing your journey with us on how did you get into, why did you feel the desire, first of all, to become an empowerment guru? Let's start there. What does that mean? What does an empowerment guru mean? Yes. It's kind of a term that I came up with um, actually quite recently. So my journey actually starts last year, last year, March, I worked, I was working as a full-time pharmacist yeah. and I had been working for this particular company for years, lots of overtime, up to 70 hour weeks. Yeah. And I was, I was kind of burnt out. I was tired and I didn't quite feel like I was aligned with my purpose. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the moment came where I was told, Dr. P. Suche, we have to let you go. Mm. And that, it kind of shook me up. Yeah. And I mean, it was unexpected, but it was also very timely. And so I had two choices. I could go back and work for another corporate pharmacy company and try to try to fit into their company culture and work my way up. Yeah. Or I could start something new, explore the unknown. Yeah. And I'd already been kind of exploring this idea of starting an empowerment business and of starting an inspirational brand. Hmm. And so this kind of gave me the opportunity to explore that even further. Um, so a few years actually prior to this, I discovered that I had this gift of poetry. I discovered that I could inspire people with my words and I had started doing more spoken words, speaking at different open mic nights and really kind of honing in on this skill that I once had as a child, Hmm. but I forgot. So when I was 12 years old, I wrote a book that was completely written in poet poetry. It was a, it was a poetic book an inspirational poetry book that I wrote when I was 12 and I forgot about that. And so a few years ago, I was reminded of this gift that I had of rhythmic poetry. And so all of this kind of accumulated last year when I was laid off and it was like, uh, it was like a, it all kind of aligned. I was like this, there's a reason why this happened. This is my, this is my path. This is my path to start an inspirational brand where I can now inspire others to align with their purpose. And so as an empowerment guru, I help women who feel like they're stuck or unfulfilled. And I help them tap into their innate gifts and talents so that they too can align with their purpose confidently confidently align with that purpose. And that's the key word here, because I want to empower the confidence in other people to pursue the unknown. Yeah, because it's scary. I know the statistics on actual adult levels of confidence are really oh. high, aren't they? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like, they're like, what if I think, you know, 90 plus percent actually think that the feel, if you ask them, they go, I'm not very confident. I'm not confident about taking a next step into the unknown. And particularly mm-hmm. if it's something that is aligned to them, you know, that often even makes you more unconfident because yeah. you, then you feel like it, people will judge you. Um, right. What if I fail? What mm-hmm. if it doesn't work out? You know, suddenly your handbrakes get on. <laughs> right. And because um, it's risky, isn't it? it so is. before, it, it we un- is. before we unpack that then, so that's really fascinating that 
It doesn't surprise me in one way because often it's actually who we are as a child is always, you know, at our core. And so the fact that you wrote a poetry book at 12 shows that a beautiful innate gift and talent in that area. And then it's really interesting that you say that you'd forgotten about that Mm. because then suddenly you went from this creative person who loved poetry and, and, um, and helping others and giving to others um, to then making a decision to do pharmacy. What was the decision making there? Why did you become a pharmacist? Ooh, okay. So this actually takes me back even further to my heritage. (laughs) And so I'm Nigerian, um, Nigerian descent. And so my parents both came here to America from Nigeria. And if you're not familiar with the Nigerian culture, um, Nigerians are very um, big on education. So from the, from, from the, as long as I can remember from when I was a little kid, I was told that education is the key to success. Education is the key to the future. You must get educated. You must be the highest, edu- you must have the highest education to succeed. Yeah. And so I kind of took that to heart. And so um, I, I became a pharmacist. I wanted to help others. I wanted, and that was the way that I was encouraged to do it. Yeah. And and I loved it. I used some of my innate gifts and talents actually include the ability to memorize a lot, a lot of information. And so as a pharmacist, I was able to tap into that innate gift. I was able to, to memorize all the different drugs and the side effects. And I was able to help people under, understand their medication and how to use it, how to take it, what to expect. So I was able to fulfill that and use my, my innate gifts and talents to do that. And it was very rewarding in that sense. So that's how I became a pharmacist. And I'm very, very honored and grateful that I was able to do that. But Mm. I feel like it wasn't using all of my innate gifts and talents. Mm. I wasn't, I wasn't actually being able to share all of what God has blessed me with. And so that was what kind of propelled this decision Mm. to, to kind of venture off and, and see Mm. how, how else I can use these, these other gifts. Amazing, amazing. And that's it. You would have to have a very good memory to be a pharmacist. The amount of different (laughs) patients and cross interactions and side effects and all of that. I admire uh, your mind to be able to do that. That's, yeah, Mm -hmm. incredible. And yeah, it is a a wonderful career. My father was a pharmacist, actually. Really? Yeah. So I grew up in family pharmacy. So I totally understand that that space that you're in from that perspective. Um, so did you feel when you had that moment and you got let off and it was a moment of just like a revelation to you going, you know, I have got this career now and I am capable and I've, you know, followed my parents' desire that I've got a university degree. I'm a confident, capable young woman. And then you had this moment and then you felt like you needed to um, become more sort of purposeful and self-aware in what you were doing. Did you feel that you couldn't do both together? Did, Did you have to leave pharmacy to be able to be where you are now? Or could you do both for those people are listening, thinking they're in one space and they want to be in another? That is a very good question, Annie. It doesn't, it's not one or the other. Mm. A lot of people, a lot of us, like in general, kind of put ourselves in a box. This is what I'm doing. This is me. This is it. This is, you know, there's no, there's no changing this. This is what I know. This is who I am. Mm. But there's, there's an opportunity. There's always an opportunity to kind of redefine that story, to redefine that message. And it doesn't require you to be either or, and, or, or it just, it requires you to just really own all of that. And so your question was, did I have to choose between pharmacy and being a solopreneur? And the answer is no. The Mm. answer is no, I could still work as a pharmacist. I still do. And I could still work as a solopreneur. And like it, it just allows me to use different skill sets. It allows me to use all of my innate gifts and talents. And I think that's what we were put on this earth to do, to share our innate gifts and talents. And oftentimes we don't even know what they are. 
Yeah. <laughs> exactly. How can you share can you your share? innate gifts and talents if you don't know what they are? <laughs> and so what I help what I help my clients do is tap into their innate gifts and talents. And one of this the powerful acronym that I help them kind of work through um, through this process, it's called GOLD. Mm-hmm. And it stands for genuine original loving dreamer. Mm-hmm. Genuine original loving dreamer. And I actually discovered this powerful acronym two years ago when I was sitting at a family wedding and I was dressed in all gold. This was back when I was working as a pharmacist full time. Yeah. And I had the, the best, you know, the, everything looked amazing from the outside. I yeah. had a good car, a good house, a good, a good community of friends and everything just looked amazing. But I felt that there was something missing inside. And so I was sitting there in my gold sequin, beautiful dress at this wedding where everyone is kind of, you know, a wedding is a happy occasion. So everyone's putting on a happy face and interacting. And I felt like I was in a bubble. Have you ever felt like this where you're just like in a bubble looking out? Mm -hmm. And I just, and I think what happened was that I, I knew that there was something missing that I wasn't authentically being myself. Yeah. And so it hit me at that moment when I was sitting there in my bubble of self-doubt, I realized that I need not just to wear gold. I needed to be gold. Mm. I needed to be a genuine, original, loving dreamer. Mm. So now I use the same powerful acronym to help other women tap into what it is that makes them genuinely them, their authentic self, what it is that makes them original because no one else is like another person. No one else is like me. So it's important to tap into those innate gifts and talents that make, make each of us so original Mm. and then loving. What is it that, that you love that you just um, like a love about yourself? What is it that other, other, other people love and admire about you? Mm. And then lastly, your dreams. What are those forgotten dreams? Mm. So one of my clients actually told me when she was working through this this process is when she was given the assignment to to talk about or to rediscover her dreams as a child and then kind of tap into her dreams now as an adult she realized that they were the same dream yeah she just forgot about it yeah and similar to me as a child of 12 I mean I don't I don't remember actually having the dream to be an artist but some part of me knew that that was, that was my purpose. Yeah. And like this book that I wrote, it not only had this amazing poet, poetic flow, um, but it also had th- these Van Gogh, Van Gogh inspired art. So it was like, what, what was this 12 year old girl <laughs> thinking here? Like, and like, how did I forget this part of myself? And so like, it's important to kind of take the time to tap into those innate gifts and talents that you might have had as a child, but you might have forgotten that during this whole process of growing up and growing out of this dreamlike state, because we've been told so many, so often that, you know, stop dreaming. (laughs) Yeah. Face the real world. This is the real world. Like, Get There's serious. no time for dreams. Get serious. <laughs> <laughs> get productive. Get busy. Um, you know, start being successful and all Grow these- up. Grow up. <laughs> oh my gosh. And isn't it crazy? We start telling kids to grow up at like three. Like, you know, when you're bigger, you'll be able to do this. When you're bigger or grow up when they're having a tantrum at like seven. <laughs> Oh. It's crazy, right? There's so right? much, so much beauty in childhood. That that's right, um, and it's amazing those people who've had, you know, the reflections that you've had, uh, just are amazed by how little they've changed. Really, you know, they've been mm-hmm. on a big journey, but their their natural um, heart and 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 love and dreams were always there, you know. And always. and when you're a child, they're limitless, right? That's the beauty so of limitless. childhood. You're, you know, you're, um, yeah, you're in the moment. I've, we've just had our granddaughter here last night and she's three. And, and I saved these little Polly Pocket 
sort of things from when my kids were young, but we'd lost all the little pieces. And I said to my husband, oh, it's a shame we've lot, we, we didn't save the little Polly Pocket characters, oh. for example. And the, But she's got all the containers, like little houses and things. And then she comes up to us and goes, and she'd got these little plastic vegetables from the supermarket, which were on some little um, special thing. And she goes, these are my Polly Pockets. And so she just put all the vegetables, you know, she had full characters going like in her mind. <laughs> he wasn't missing anything, right? So it's really interesting that we approach wow. this situation going, oh, it's a shame that it wasn't exactly like it was. But for a child's mind, it's like, no, I've adapted, you know, like she don't, one, don't know what your expectations are or what your whole framework is, and yeah. which is really great. And two, just take something new and go, oh, this works perfectly. And obviously that's the way it's supposed to be. And I love what watching right. her mind on it's a good reminder I love being around young children always because it's just that freshness of yeah what could I do next and how does this work and what do I love doing you know and how they they've just got such as you were mentioning with that gold acronym it's sort of such you know natural tendencies and desires to be in some one space whereas another child will be completely different you know um mm. it's just beautiful to watch so it's so beautiful amazing yeah there's there's so much power i believe i feel that that what it comes when you kind of let your mind explore what could be yeah yeah exactly <laughs> you know, right when you, <laughs> and just you like jump your, all your those expectations. you just let your mind explore yeah. you block out all those limiting beliefs that you may have once had and i actually instead of just blocking them out i like to transform them into an expanding belief Mm. So a limiting belief is something that limits our mindset, that limits our potential, that limits the possibilities, that limits us in general. And yeah. an expanding belief is something that expands our mindset, that, that expands our belief, or expands our, our belief in ourselves and expands the opportunity. So why not turn those limiting beliefs into expanding beliefs? So instead of thinking that I can't do that, who am I to do that? Think I can do that especially if I put my mind to it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, you know, you just change, yeah, you change your mindset yeah. and you become more open to, to simply believing in yourself. Because mm -hmm. I think that's what we all kind of struggle with, that idea of believing in yourself. But if, if you don't believe that you are capable, that you are worthy, that you are of value, you believe that you are not. Exactly. <laughs> That's, it's easy to say you are what you believe. And that's so true, isn't it? Right? In every, right? Yeah. So it's so very important to, to believe in, in yourself, to believe that in your worth. And it all comes down to kind of taking the time to dive deep into your innate gifts and talents. Because if now, if you know your, if you know your worth, if you know what you are capable of doing, if you know your value, if you know that no other person can do the same thing that you can do in the same way that you can do it, yeah. then it really kind of helps give you that confidence to go out there and do it. <laughs> exactly. It's like, this is why I was born to be, right? But we're all there for a reason. We're all so unique. So what methods do you use with different people that you're coaching? How do you help them transform their mindset? So one of the things I use is this gold acronym, mm. but then it's one thing to say to someone, be gold. And it's yeah. another thing to, to actually be gold. Yeah. So <laughs> there's a seven step process that I use with my clients and I walk them through on how to become gold. And each of these seven steps is linked to one of my poetic flows. Mm. And so I'm a transformational rhythmic speaker or a spoken word artist. And I found that there's so much power in spoken word because it speaks to your soul. Yeah it bypasses this mind that's always judgmental and shutting things down. And it just kind of bypasses all that and just goes straight to the soul. Yeah. <laughs> and so by me speaking to the soul with this spoken word, it allows you to really understand the, the step and apply that step to your life to now become gold. Mm. So, and it helps you really tap into your innate gifts and talents. And then from there, um, we also talk, touch on positive affirmations, the mm -hmm. power of positive affirmations. So I've done a, quite a bit of research in this arena because I found that we need to start speaking words of encouragement to ourselves, <laughs> Yes. right? And so many of us have kind of tried this idea of affirmations, but 
if those affirmations don't align with your core values and your future goals, they don't really speak to you. Mm. They do absolutely nothing. So yeah. research has actually found that in order for an affirmation to be positive and effective in your life, it needs to be aligned with your core values and aligned with your future goals. Mm. So I help my clients develop affirmations, positive affirmations that align with their core values and their future goals so that, that they now feel confident and, and they can actively act like consistently activate these affirmations to remind themselves what they're capable of on a continuous basis. Mm. Oh, I love that. I love that because so many times, you know, you'll buy, you know, even a pack of affirmation cards or Mm -hmm. you'll, you know, people pop them up on, on your Instagram or or Facebook or whatever. And so they are affirmations, but they're not, it's like, it's like anything, but we're not all that one set of, you know, sayings or or even quotes. It's actually applying it to the specific Mm -hmm. person going, yes, you know, there might only be five or 10, but they're your, they're They're your, your, right. They're your affirmations. They're not a generic affirmation. They're something that really closely resonates with you. And I'm all about that, finding things that closely resonate with you because in that, in that resonation, it kind of like, it it speaks to your soul. Yeah. And that's so very important to be able to do that, to speak to the core of your very being, because that's what really helps motivate you and get you to kind of, to get it going, to believe in yourself and get it going. Mm. For those people who have been on a, a long, challenging journey, do you think it's ever too late to start new and learning new things and trying new ways of being? Never. It's never too late. So I myself literally transformed my entire life in the last year mm. and developed this inspirational brand to really kind of inspire, not kind of, but really inspire others that it, it is possible no matter what age Mm. It is possible to change your, your mindset, to change your, your, uh, your story, to change yeah. your story. And so I, I guess a good example would be, so I grew up not being able to swim. <laughs> and I no swimming in no, no, Nigeria. <laughs> no, no, there was no swimming really in Nigeria, even though my mom was a fisherwoman. Yeah. I don't know how that you know, how that was possible, not being able to swim, but there was no swimming here um, for me. (laughs) And so um, I actually almost drowned when I was a young, young kid. And so my mom kind of, instead of having me learn how to swim, I was kind of sheltered from the water. So you're not going near that anymore. You're protected. And so I grew up not knowing how to swim. And then just a a year ago, so a lot lot of this happened a year ago, a lot of this change, the shift of mindset really happened for me a year ago. I was like, you know what? I want to learn how to swim. I'm going to do it. I'm going to go from being like, not like being afraid of the water to finally being friends with the water. Mm -hmm. And so I made myself do it. I made myself kind of jump in the water, learn how to flow. It was a huge learning curve. It's not easy when when you're older and you're thinking of like how much you're sinking and how hard it is to stay afloat. And it just, your mind just keeps playing games with you. Keeps telling yourself that, you know, why are you doing this? This Mm. is, it's not possible. You're too old, you know, but you have to kind of work your way through it. And the more you do, the more those limiting beliefs kind of shut down and then turn into expanding beliefs. And so the more I kept swimming, the more I kept practicing, the more I was able to do it with ease. Mm. Now I'm swimming laps to, to I'm doing two thirds of a mile at laps. And it's just like this, the other day when I was doing it, I was like, how is this possible? How did this girl who almost drowned now become an avid (laughs) lap swimmer? Yeah. That's the idea here. Like it, it is possible to change no matter how old you are. You just have to turn the limiting beliefs into expanding beliefs and to really give yourself the opportunity to explore something new, to explore the unknown. Mm. And become comfortable of not being good at it straight away. Oh, for right? sure. You know, there's such an element of, but, you know, like that's right, if you've grown up 
not swimming and then also had a fear factor put into mm. that is you know that's how you could drown so you've actually you know got this whole potential death right. associated with it mm-hmm. and that and and totally understandable from a mum to do that when they can't swim themselves so you know, the whole framework it doesn't mean that anything was bad it is what it is and so yeah. but then to be able to make a choice like that which is symbolic for all those other choices that we think oh it's just too hard or I'm not I won't be good at it you know where you don't have to be good at it in fact you probably won't be good at it children aren't good at things to start they stumble they fall they pick themselves up they'll have a little cry but they then just keep going at it and that's it all of a sudden you're swimming laps you know um whether it's all of a sudden in a week whether it's a month whether it's a Mm -hmm. year you know I've had friends who've done that with say ocean swimming you just go suddenly you go oh my gosh there's a shark out there (laughs) see that's a whole nother level (laughs) right it's a whole nother level of okay you swim a little bit further (laughs) they'll get you first (laughs) and so but that, that's it and then suddenly going oh okay I was good in the pool but now I'm now in the ocean and I've got currents and I'm, my head's doing some crazy things about it, about potential sharks um, and so you can then go oh okay I'm not going to be good at it so I won't try whereas mm-hmm. keep trying because isn't it the most amazing um, I, I love that you you call it going from powerless to powerful you know yes. so um, you're actually saying yeah I didn't I felt so you know, unconfident in this space, I felt, you know, that I needed to pull away from it. So I wasn't hurt or damaged or, you know, or just feeling, feeling um, scared and to actually go, I want to become powerful. I want to own this. I want to claim yes. it. No, yes. so exactly. with that then comes such freedoms, like I'm yes. a swimmer or, and- you know, I can speak in public or I can right? have, you know, um, you know, I, I can have the, the mindset to not let other people control my actions, you know, whatever it is, it's, it's mm-hmm. how it's super powerful, isn't it's it? It's so powerful. And that's the power of being able to, like you said, create these affirmations that allow you to go from powerless to powerful. That's the power of being able to turn those limiting beliefs into expanding beliefs. That's the power in being able to explore the unknown and finally try something new. There's so much power in that. It, it helps you transform from powerless to powerful. And, and, just, and just that, and that experience alone. <laughs> <laughs> and just letting yourself experience something new and different. But it doesn't, it doesn't happen in one day. It might take weeks, like you said. It might take months. It might take a year. But it does happen. And I think that's why it's so essential to kind of reach out to find that support network. Because I didn't do this alone. I wasn't able to learn how to swim on my own. I had coaches, I had my partner, I had people helping me along the way. And the same way is how I want to, I help my clients along the way, because it's, it's, it's not an easy thing to go from lacking confidence to being full, having full confidence. It doesn't happen overnight. (laughs) You might need a little help with that. And so I also help, um, actually, I don't know if you mentioned this already. I also help wellness experts in particular mm. make that same transformation. And then once they go through that transformation, they're feeling really confident in who they are. And as a person, I help them develop their own business yeah. so to craft their own offer, to define their soul story and share their soul story and their offer on other people's platforms to get seen, to get the visibility that they need to grow their business, to grow your global community. And so I feel like as a pharmacist and as a transformational rhythmic speaker and as an empowerment guru, I'm uniquely qualified to work with these wellness experts like myself and help them along this process, this journey, because you can't do it alone. Exactly. You can't do it alone. You can't do it alone. Because there'll be always areas that you just, that's right. You don't know what you don't know. You don't, you know, you don't know what you don't know. (laughs) Exactly right. And then suddenly you go, oh, like I know I'm missing something because usually it's because I'm striving so hard and why is it working? And suddenly you understand the world of SEO and social media and personal branding. you know, online so coaching and there's like so many aspects that it's like, don't beat yourself up. That's right. Often no. it's because you're on a journey and, uh, and you would have learned those, you know, you've had so much learnings and, you know, and that's the same way as me as a coach. Like when you first become an entrepreneur, you know, you've gone from a clinician to then setting up your own business. You've learned all those things, right. And you've yeah. been 
surrounded by people who've helped you on your way. And so now that's it. I know you've got a personal mission to help a thousand wellness experts and and other women to be able to go to their next level, which is such a wonderful mission. Like, wow, what a, what a exciting um, testament to, you know, what you're trying to achieve in your business. And I'm sure you're going to actually smash those numbers. Oh, thank you so much, Annie. I mean, I feel like my mantra, my, my business, my business mantra, my personal mantra is together we thrive Mm. because I strongly believe that together, when we work together, when we collaborate, when we, when we're not fighting to push each other down and to, to pull only ourselves up, when we're actually reaching out and helping others, connecting and collaborating, we can really make moves we can make more foreign moves we can advance towards our dreams we can really make success inevitable and so that is why I, I'm on this mission mm. because together we thrive mm. <laughs> exactly oh my gosh how do you celebrate the wins that you have in your lives? <laughs> how do I celebrate the wins I have in life or the wins I have with my clients or both how do you do it for yourself and how do you do it with your clients because that's what it's all about isn't it isn't it the most most biggest delight when you're a coach and you go or even for yourself and you go I've had a breakthrough you know those oh moments that you go yes and I'm a big fan of take that moment yes in fact milk it for as much as you can (laughs) right so important to just sit back and go oh my gosh like this is a Mm -hmm. level there's always so many little levels yeah Yeah. how do you do that for yourself personally first and then you one thing I do for myself is I let myself sit in that moment Mm. I let myself sit in that moment of especially as soon as I realize that I've accomplished something and oftentimes once we accomplish something we're on to the next yeah (laughs) <laughs> too busy to move forward right? right so I allow myself to sit in this moment um one of the things that I personally do and I actually encourage my my clients to do is to first of all celebrate the the small wins mm. all the wins no, no matter how small but yeah. to give yourself a high five yeah especially now when we're not really, you know, touching other people. I love, I used to love high fives, right? (laughs) And hugs. But like right now, like it's, it's not possible to do that, but you can always give yourself a high five. Yeah. You can always celebrate that win. And it just feels very rewarding to kind of like, yeah, to to do that. Right. The physicalness of like, yeah, I did it. I did it. And I, I knew I could, and I did it. Um, and then another thing I also encourage my clients to do, and I do this personally, is to create a golden board. Mm. So a lot of people have heard of a vision board. Yeah. And a vision board is where you put all your dreams, all your aspirations of usually the next, the following year. Yeah. Um, and you put them all out, like your dream house, your dream car, your dream, all your dreams are displayed on this board. Mm. But I encourage my clients, and I do this myself as well, to create a golden board. Mm-hmm. So on this golden board, you'll not only put in your visions and dreams, but you'll also put what it is that makes you gold. All your all your golden attributes, your genuine, original, loving dreamer. All those things that make you authentically yourself. So when I um, when I accomplish something, especially, I like to kind of find something that represents that accomplishment. Yeah. And put it on this golden board. And it just allows me to continuously remind myself what I'm capable of. Mm. So now is actually a good time. I think this is a good, this is a time where actually I wrote, I drafted up my initial golden board around this time for this year. So going into this new year, then in 2020, for 2021, why not create a golden board Mm. to put out, to, to display all your golden attributes and continuously remind yourself what you're capable of. Yeah. So. I have this golden board. It's adjacent from my bed. So whenever I wake up and when I wake up in the morning, <laughs> whenever. I, whenever, when I wake up in the morning, I, that's the first thing I see. Yeah. And so it, my eyes always go to some part of it. And I believe that whatever part of the board it goes to, that's what I meant to see and to really kind of help continuously remind myself what I'm capable, that I'm gold because 
of such and such and I'm gold because of I was able to do this and I'm gold because my my dream vision is this and I'm making forward steps at each and every day towards that and so it's important to kind of not only celebrate the wins but to continuously remind ourselves of our golden attributes that we are continuously are continuously able to to make those forward moves to keep getting those wins to keep moving closer and closer towards our dreams yeah yeah and those dreams will continue to develop that's it because mm-hmm. you know every now and then some people when they start on this journey they're often still limited in their dreaming right so it's good to start <laughs> dreaming but they'll kind yes. of get excited and go but then they'll suddenly it's all actually like that's just a first level goal but they think that's the whole thing right mm-hmm. um I remember when I was you know after I'd had you know I've got five children and I was going back and getting my first job and I thought that was the be- like the job that I got was my dream like imagine getting this job and then suddenly I'd been there for a few years I'm like going oh my gosh it's not actually my dream anymore right there's more mm-hmm. and there's more and there's more so yes. it's really interesting of I love that putting it in front of you and then aligning it you know for you for your goal and I'll, I'll, I align it to my values and mm-hmm. then go yeah because because I'm on this journey more and more things just become present you know yes. in that dreaming and uh, yeah really super super powerful wow so with those people that you've coached so far what are their biggest gross what are their biggest moments that they've had you know what oh yeah that's what do they overcome that is a great question one client in particular um we had i had given her this exercise to write out 30 attributes that made her uniquely special and this was in the like around the first or second week of us working together and she had um a lot of confidence issues uh, she had started working with me because her goal of 2020 was to develop her confidence and it was towards the end of 2020 she found that she had it was nearing towards the end of 2020 and she had found that she hadn't made any progress at all yeah <laughs> and so her goal was to to really start making progress. And so I'd given her this assignment to write out 30 attributes that made her uniquely special. And she was only able to write out three. Mm. So of the 30 lines, she filled out three. And I I asked her, there's no yeah. are there any other things? Are there any other things that you admire and appreciate about yourself? She was like, no. And so as we continued working together over the next few weeks, I gave her the assignment again. I had saw, seen so much progress. I always uh, have my clients take a self-esteem assessment, especially when they're going through the golden program that I have mm-hmm. created to help develop their confidence. And so her self-esteem um, scale had, had changed. It had grown significantly. So I had asked her again at the end to to write out 30 attributes about herself and guess how many she was able to write 30 (laughs) 30 plus she had 33 (laughs) golden attributes she just kept she just kept writing don't limit me at 30 dr (laughs) peace right she 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 just kept writing she just like there was so much that she had found that she had grown so much and become so amazingly confident in all of her skills and their innate gifts and talents that she had and it was just an incredible journey that I was able to follow her through so exciting that is so exciting and that's the thing for those listening in it's not even that you're fine you know you are finding those things but they're already there you know yes. we're, 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 we are already those people it's actually just taking time to tap in to who you are and to learn about yourself and to value who you were born to be and to be able to then you know be able to then go yeah that's right this is why I'm unique this is these are my attributes this is what drives me this is what makes me smile or giggle or um things funny or whatever it is you know that's right it's it's permission to be right I think there's a massive release in having permission to be and that's it I think when the brakes go on at three three words it's like I don't want to say I'm like 
all these other things or because that's then pride or who do I think I am Mm -hmm. or the other I don't know because I just don't know because I've never Mm -hmm. looked at myself as being uniquely beautiful right yeah Yeah. and we all are do we take the time right we all are uniquely beautiful but how often do we take the time to acknowledge and appreciate that that's it Mm. that's because too busy too too busy living someone else's expectation (sighs) right too busy living someone else's dream yeah (laughs) (laughs) right (laughs) when it's your dream you know when you just get dreaming and you know time just goes and you don't care because you just go on lost in it right I just Mm -hmm. love it I was like or when you you know imagine yourself for those who aren't at the dreaming stage yet who actually just get engrossed in a book you know and how lovely it is on a Sunday afternoon when you're reading a book and then suddenly like six hours goes by and you go Um, because time suddenly flies because you're in this space of you're just loving where you're at you're loving the adventure you're loving the learning you're loving the time that you're having out from the busyness you know we're all driven by different things and it's actually just permission to be and in that becomes a new appreciation and that's it how you can go from three to 33 you know that's that's the dramatic effect of, you know, it is exponential like that. And I know that to be a truth. It's like mm-hmm. amazing. It's like a floodgate, right? Mm-hmm. Because that sense of not just leaning in, it's like leaping. It's like oh. you go on these a massive forward propulsions right. of, wow, you know, who would have thought? It's exciting. It's so very, it's so exciting. And you had touched on this, uh, this word of success. I believe you had said yeah. the word success. And so that word, I believe it kind of, it, it's different for every person, Yeah. this idea of success. So my definition of success is when your future self looks back at your present and smiles back with pure content. Mm. I'm going to say it one more time. It's when your future self looks back at your present and smiles back with pure content. Mm. And why does it smile? It smiles because it knows that you're making those forward moves towards Mm. your future self, that you're making those forward moves towards your goals, that you're aligning more with your purpose, that you're doing what you're meant to be, what you're meant to be doing. And and that's what makes it smile. Mm. It's not this idea, a lot of times people think success is this idea where of where they should be or where they need to be, but it's really getting aligned with your purpose and starting that journey towards your future self. Yeah. That is success in itself. Mm. Mm. And so what I help my clients do is to make success inevitable (laughs) by aligning with their purpose and clearly defining their purpose and confidently advancing towards that purpose is success in itself. Mm. Beautifully said, beautifully said, because that's it. That's what our future is. It's the sum of our todays, right? So if Mm -hmm. we're not living our todays in a way that represents what our future dream will be, if it's not a stepping stone to that, then that we won't achieve those dreams. We won't get to that future. We'll get to a very different future. In fact, we'll probably be living the same todays that we're currently having. (laughs) The same todays. So if you're not happy with the way that today is going, you're going to have to change your today. Right. Totally right. True. Totally yeah. true. Exactly. Yeah. Wow. Oh, beautiful. Well said. <laughs> so how do people find you, Dr. Peace? How do they connect with you and, and find out more about what you have to offer? Yeah. So if you would like some, if you're enjoying what you're hearing today and you would like some more doses of inspiration, I inspire, I encourage you to visit my website, docpeaceofmind.com. It's docpeaceofmind.com. And if you text the word gold directly to my line, 619-363-5490, Again, that's gold to 619-363-5490. I will literally gift you the my personal affirmation creation tool. So this personal affirmation creation tool is what we were talking about, where we, you can create personal affirmations that closely align with your core values and your future goals to really get you f- from this mindset of powerlessness to powerfulness to feeling powerless, to powerful. So this is a hundred dollar value and I'll literally gift it to you. So just text the word gold to 
619-363-5490 and you'll get the personal affirmation tool, the ultimate pact with your inner self. Oh, fantastic. Well, what a blessing you are, Dr. Peace. It's been so lovely chatting with you today. And I'm sure I'll have all your details on my podcast platform for those people to uh, read your bio again, listen in, um, be able to contact you and definitely get that free gift. Who wouldn't want that free gift? Oh my gosh. (laughs) So uh, yeah, blessings to you. And I wish you all the best in your future success, achieving your mission to reach these thousands of women and to be able to, yeah, really help them on their journey, but to achieve their dreams, right? It's all about achieving their dreams and dream, dream boldly, you know, dream big, you know, and the sky's the limit. And uh, yes. I love it. Yes. The sky is the limit. Give yourself permission to be you, to dream. Mm -hmm keep shining (laughs) thanks so much for listening to this episode of memoirs of successful women you can find me at anniegibbons.com where you can download my free resources get connected on social and check out my online magic transformation program if you love this show feel free to subscribe to future episodes and of course share it with your friends I'll see you again soon and until then, happy podcasting.